I want to state a fact to you, and this is a very important fact, and you never want to forget it. You can cope successfully with life, and that is really saying something, but it's saying the truth. I met a 50-year-old man. He told me he was 50. He said, I have really been having it rough, and I don't mean maybe. Life, he says, has been throwing me some curves, and they're very mean curves. What am I going to do about it? And then I met a woman, 35 years old. She told me that that was her age. Just why she told me, I don't know. She said, I have had so many hard knocks that I'm dizzy from them. I am actually reeling because of these blows. What am I going to do about it? Now looking out at a great number of people on the basis of the law of averages, I know that out in front right here, there are many who could say the same thing to one degree of emphasis or another. And you might say, what are you going to do about it? Well, here's one thing that you can do. You don't let it get you down. You go and stand and look into a mirror at what you see in that mirror. And then you say this to that image in the mirror. Listen, you are greater than anything that can ever happen to you. You go home today and do that and then add to that, I, the Lord, your God, am with you. But there's no gain saying the fact that life can be and often is very difficult, but it's not impossible. And you can handle it. You can cope with it. And I'd like to give you 11 words, magic words. In addition to looking at the mirror and making that comment, say these words that come from a book written by a man who really had it tough. His name was Job. Job's trials and troubles are proverbial. Here are the 11 words. If you return to the Almighty, you will be built up. Now, isn't that something? That's right out of the book. You know, this is quite a book. <laughs> Anything you need is in that book. And there's some people, believe it or not, who never read this book. Where do they get off with that? <laughs> Where do they figure they get their wisdom? Maybe that's why their lives are so messed up. If you return to the Almighty, you will be built up. Up to what? 
Well, you'll become smart. You'll get wise. You'll realize that you can't fight life. It's too big for you. It'll beat you down. So the thing to do is to cooperate with life. Get in harmony with it. Get on the same wavelength with it. And then it will work for you rather than against you. Now it says here in the first part of the Bible um, when, when the Lord created the world that every one of the seven days that he created he took a look at it and he saw that it was good. And when he created man, human life, he saw that it was good. The whole world was made good. Why, the Lord piled up such resources in this world for mankind that, that it seemed like he never in the world could exhaust them. When the early pioneers came to this country, in the west, they found grass that grew seven, eight feet high. And when the wind caressed it, it undulated like the waves of the sea. And the great white wagons that traversed it were called prairie schooners. And this land was rich away down deep black soil out of which could come that which would feed the world forever. And uh, the geese and the ducks were so numerous that they say it would take two to three hours for a flock to pass a given point and that they were so thick that they would blot out the sun. Riches which he laid up for mankind. Well, on the same provision is made for individuals. You don't need to have it so hard as you make it. If you cooperate with life, don't fight it. Not long ago, I made a speech to a company called the Ralston Purina Company in St. Louis. 5,000 of their salesmen for a national sales convention of this great company. And this company was established by a man whom I knew at one time. His name was William H. Danforth. He was the founder, president, chairman of the board, and a great industrialist. He lived to be very old. When he was a young boy, he was very sickly. Later on, he wrote a book called I Dare You. It's a very small book. I read it once every year. I have read it ever since he gave it to me 40 years ago, which means I've read it 40 times. This sickly boy in school told a teacher one time that life was too tough, that he understood that he wouldn't live very long. And the teacher said, remain after school. You've all been told to remain after school. And he was scared, and the teacher sat in a chair and he said, now, Bill, stand up there in front of me. Draw yourself up to your full height. I know you think you are weak and skinny and sickly and you're going to die. But I want you to say after me, I am a child of God. God has given me a good body which I haven't developed. God has given me a good mind. God has put fresh air and pure water and wholesome food into the world for me. And I hereby dare you 
to become the healthiest boy in this school, the toughest physically. I dare you to live longer than any one of them. Now, it's a strange thing to say to a little boy. But years later, when he was about 84, <laughs> I had lunch with him in the old Jefferson Hotel in St. Louis. There were half a dozen men. Uh, and I made the mistake of saying to him, Mr. Danforth, how are you all this vigorous and vital at 84? He said to me, son, <laughs> remember this was a long while ago. <laughs> Would you like to be the same when you're 84? I said, yes, sir, I sure would. Well, he says, I dare you. And he took me out in the lobby, he took the other men out there. He said, the first thing you've got to learn is to have the proper form of exercise for your body. Now, he said, you fellas take off your coats. We were in the middle of the lobby. And he said, we'll go through some exercises. I said, you don't mean right here, do you? Right here, he said, in no time like the present. Then he had us lying on the floor with our feet in the air, <laughs> doing all kinds of push-ups. And finally, when we were all struggling back into our coats, puffing, he wasn't puffing a puff. He said, return unto the Almighty, and he will build you up meaning to cooperate with life. Don't fight it. Learn the rules. Here's the rule book. You practice all the rules, and you're in forever. If you don't practice these rules, you're going to have hard going all the way. Life is adjusted according to proper scientific formula and procedure and you live with it, and you come out okay. Not without difficulty. I met another man. <laughs> I met a friend of his the other day, and we were talking about this man. i never forget the first time I met him. I was making a speech in a West Coast city and was having dinner with some people before the meeting. And we were in a sophisticated uh, kind of a restaurant. They had booths and all that in it, dim lights, in order to not to show the poor quality of the food, they turned the lights down. <laughs> so we were sitting in this booth when I suddenly became aware of the fact that there was a man in that room that was interested in me for some reason or another. And he was crying out in raucous and strident tones the question so that nobody could fail to hear it. Where's Dr. Peel? Well, now, I am no shrinking violet when you get right down to it, but I didn't care for this kind of publicity. And I sank down in my booth trying to render myself inconspicuous. But this man uh, was pretty well intoxicated, and uh, he seemed to have either as a result of that or despite it, a kind of an unerring perceptiveness because presently he located me. <laughs> and he came down over and leaned down over me, bringing his eyes, bloodshot as they were, close up against mine and nearly asphyxiating me with his breath. <laughs> and he said, are you Dr. Peel? And I admitted my identity. <laughs> Whereupon he says, well, boy, I sure am glad to meet you. He said, I've read all your books. You've done me an awful lot of good. <laughs> this actually happened. And I talked with him, passed the time of day, and told him God bless him. And the fact is, he turned around and he said, well, 
God bless you too. And I said, yeah, you too. Well, that was all it was of that. But two or three years later, I was making a talk in a Texas city and I told this story and uh, everybody laughed at it. And after the meeting was over, I was standing at the head table shaking hands with such persons as came along to greet me when I saw this man standing over there and he looked sort of halfway familiar, but you know, you never can tell for sure. And finally, when they'd all gone, he came over and he said, I want to tell you something. I'm the only man in this room that knows that that story you told about that drunk in that West Coast uh, city is true. Well, I said, of course it's true. Well, he said, I know it's true. Well, I said, so do I know it's true. <laughs> How do you know it's true? He said, I was the man. I was the man. And he said, you know what you said to me? You said, for God to bless me. Didn't you? I said, yes, I guess I did. Well, he said, I went out of there and I started going to church. And I fell in with a spiritual group and I got converted. And I want to tell you, I haven't had a drink since the day I was converted. The reason I was a drunk, he said, I was all mixed up. I'd been doing a lot of wrong things and therefore everything had gone wrong. And that is a scientific observation. If you do wrong things, what do you expect to come out of it? Right things? Why, well, no, if you do wrong things, you're going to get the wrong result. And he said, when I got organized and got on the wavelength with life through Jesus Christ, my Savior, then he said, I got so I can, I can handle life. I can cope with it successfully. No, it's just that simple. God created life. He put the rules in it that makes it work. And he gave it to you and to me. And what are we going to do with it? mess it up, say those aren't the rules, we got some other rules. Well, we're not smart enough to, they can't even make life. Nobody yet has discovered how to make life. <laughs> Funny, isn't it? Maybe they'll get a form of it sometime. Once in a while I see an announcement, somebody's discovered now that genes can be created but I don't see them being created. It's still God's job. So you get in harmony.